Cooking is everything to me and creating that experience for people that goes back to my childhood and extends through my entire career in life. It's the most important thing to me now is creating food experiences for people. That is why I wanted to be a chef. Creating menus in the seasons and highlighting the product raised and harvested and produced and created by local individuals and making them the star of the plate. That feeling you get when you're like, wow, we did this or we're doing this in the moment, there's just really nothing better. That's the Montana experience. Nothing is easy, everything is beautiful, everything is special and you have to really work for it. I grew up on Wildo Farm in Sparks, Maryland. It's up in the country about an hour north of Baltimore. We had a big orchard growing up. We had a big garden. We had lots of fruit trees and you know, you, you name it, we grew it or had it. Living a farm lifestyle, it really prepared me having to work for everything. Like we weren't just given anything, we had to work for it. You know, one of my earliest memories is this thing called the Easy Bake Oven. I really loved to bake. The pie making, once I started doing that as a little kid, I realized how much work went into food. Just like sharing food with them, I think it was a way for me to share myself at an early, even at an early age. I think I always knew that I wanted to cook professionally. I think I was scared to do it professionally. Like I don't want to go to school to be a history major anymore or a sociology major or an anthropology major. I kept switching around. I want to go to school to be a chef and that's when I switched. My journey to Montana pretty much started from my journey to Patagonia and I'd just been on Top Chef season five. And my goal was to have more experiences and not just be in one place. I really wanted to push myself. So I took the job in Patagonia, Chile at Martin Pescador Fly Fishing Lodge. I met Garrett Blackburn, who is now my ex-husband, and he was living also in Montana. I came to visit him a couple times going to farmers markets, kind of just like really feeling it out to get to know the farmers in the community. So I would go to every single farmers market. I would just sell empanadas, I would sell salad sides, give out a card for catering, you know, small stuff. And it just started, people started biting. I wanted to recreate catering. I wanted it to be this Montana experience that was true farm to table without being too cliche of what the saying. There's just so much opportunity here. So I started doing farm dinners. 50-ish people came to that first one and we did this beautiful dinner and we had all these courses and the weather was like crazy for one part and then all of a sudden it stopped raining and we had a wonderful, sun one of the most beautiful sunsets I've seen in Montana ever. That was what I wanted people to see. Showing people what we could do and it really did take off from there after that first summer. Um, I usually start planning the farm dinners about December, January. That part is like breaking down all the details. Thinking, brainstorming about the menu, what we might need. We go through all that and it probably takes about a couple months. I am a, I'm an extreme perfectionist when it comes to stuff and I'm also a realist. So I'll be like, we can't do it like that anymore, we're going to do it like this. In catering, you're constantly juggling and you're constantly changing things. And that's the thing about farm dinners is the weather might not cooperate. You forgot to bring this and you're in the middle of a field. So what can you do with what you have? And that's the key to it all. How we start our day, the day of a farm dinner setting up, is that there's little bits of prep items that have to be doing at HQ. I like to get there a little bit earlier than staff just to like visualize how we're going to do it because every year I think you can do things better. Then the staff arrives, we start unpacking all the rentals that have been delivered by the rental company, organizing the tables and chairs and rentals, and then we start setting up the scene. We have to set up the kitchen scene, we set up the bar scene. 
the most important thing is making sure the staff is hydrated, that everyone's happy, that everyone's feeling encouraged. I think that's a huge part of it. And once we set up all the tables and chairs, we do all the place settings, the flowers, the chalkboards, the setup is exhausting. But you're setting up and you're putting this together, this amazing experience, and then all of a sudden you look and you're like, this is amazing. And you get to enjoy that and relish in it for like, you know, so many minutes. Then we're starting to make dinner. During a farm dinner, I'm always seeing everything. It's like, it's really hard for me not to notice or see everything. So I'm constantly checking in on everybody, whether it's staff or guests. <laughs> Taking a minute here and there to really visualize and really make sure everybody's good. Taking note of everything and making sure it's perfect. My heart after the farm dinner this year was just so full because we raised so much money for Gallatin Farm to School. There were so many amazing people there that have been supporting forever. So many people told me how great it was. And it's not just hearing that, it's just seeing it. Seeing it sometimes just means more than hearing it. Actually seeing people enjoying that experience and that Montana moment and in support that's something I'm so passionate about, Gallatin Farmer School, it just means the world to me. It really does. For me, when it all comes together, this is an experience that people will talk about for the rest of their lives. Sitting at a table and having a meal can do powerful things. Bringing people to a table, that sense of community, is just such an important aspect of life. And for people, maybe that's one of the reasons why we all fight so much out there is because no one actually sits down and listens to anyone else but themselves. And food does that for people. It makes people stop. And if we all just started listening to each other more, we might just get along that much better by actually listening to each other's stories. And that's what's really special to me, I think, overall. Those are the best food memories.